Yeah. Oh, what you said, you didn't hear much feedback from the students as far as what they didn't like. I heard very little negatives, yeah. But can you give an example of what one of those negatives was? Um, there was a little bit about the threading, and it's a year old, so it was more about sort of stupid mechanical things like discussion threading, uh, which turned out actually to be my fault as opposed to be Canvas's fault. But Canvas has some tweaks that you have to set differently than your than Learn at UW, and I just wasn't aware that those tweaks were there to do. Okay. But once I did them, they worked. So it's about, as I recall, how you sort the replies. Okay. Like, do you see the most recent on top or on the bottom? And that was entirely instructor error. Uh, but it is actually a setting, like you can flip it to go either way. Yeah? How does it look on a mobile device, do you know? I, I should know I'm 18, but I don't know. Um, boy, I can't, I don't think I ever, I think I was probably hypersensitive because I was piloting it, as okay. I think I was always looking at it on an actual monitor yeah, of some kind. I a laptop a lot, but I don't remember, and I don't remember students telling me anything about mobile access. Okay. Sorry. Yeah? What was your experience like reconstituting all the previously developed components of your online course in the Canvas environment? Um, there are two people in the room that helped me a lot with that. And you're yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as I recall, the only it's actually super easy to set up, but I actually set it up from scratch. Import didn't work for me. And it mostly didn't work, not because it doesn't import. It, 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 last year, anyway, it imported in this sort of glob. So all the files come in in this one big, like with no file structure, which sort of made it ridiculous. So I did it one module at a time. And there were issues only in the file format I had used for Learn at UW to run the lectures, which are like, you know, 11, 15 minute videos. Uh, so there were some conversion issues but I really did it from scratch. But uh, honestly, it was so easy to set up, I barely had to look at the documentation, so I don't see that as a right. huge hurdle. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we did a, a pilot course this fall, and uh, yeah, so we, I had a TA helping, um, <coughs> we did the export function out of H2L, and then took the HTML files, and that worked relatively well. Yeah, that's what we tried to do. Okay. <laughs> And it wasn't that it didn't work, it's that you end up with this long alphabetically ordered list of file names and you're like, okay, now what do I do? So maybe maybe this has gotten better in a year? Yeah, yeah. I've got some notes back from when we did it. Yeah. Fun way I can share with you, John, so clean them up. We, mm -hmm. Yeah, it did take about six countries to see, but then we think we have a process okay. that yeah. we yeah. uh, That is awesome. The other thing to, to note about Canvas that I remember uh, Christy pointing out was, um, the Canvas community, uh, did you get onto that very much? Uh, yeah, in fact, when I discovered this analytics thing, that was one <laughs> of the ways I found out that it was a bug and not a feature, <laughs> is that I got in and there were other people complaining about the same thing. And, so that, and it's actually a good community, like people are sharing useful stuff. Yeah. Um, that's also how we found, I forgot to mention, my IT guy in my department found a, like he's like a middle school teacher in Ohio or something, who came up with an, uh, used the API to develop a, his own little freeware to do the analytics that Learn at, w, Learn at UW already does. And it was that Canvas community that helped my IT guy find that thing. So it's nice to have that to fall back on. I just still sort of feel it should be part of what you pay for, but it was <laughs> nice to have that to fall back on. Um, did you find that it, affected the way that you taught having, like what were the pedagogical differences? You said for the students it looked the same, for the most part maybe a little bit hairier, a little bit more room to breathe in the discussion mm -hmm. session, so it wasn't quite so <coughs> teach well as visually yeah. ugly. Yeah, ugly, yep. Um, I, the one thing I noticed, I actually found them very similar products in that way, but the one thing I noticed was in quiz design. So Canvas, if anybody's played with a quiz tool yet, it actually, it, yeah, it actually prompts you to give, I found myself giving better feedback because the tool makes it easier to give feedback. Uh, yes, yes, right. And so I actually found, I, I, at the end of the whole experience, I felt that I had given better feedback in the quiz because of the, the layout and the look of the CMS, which was really interesting. Except for that, I would say it's pretty parallel. Like so, what did you guys find? Like what, do you like? what do you dislike? What do you try? How did the iframe experiment go? 
Those groups. Those are my groups that I just created. I don't know how to put people in them because we only so have one test student, so <laughs> no one's in them. But I made those groups. Look, there they are. Everybody's in them. Start collaborating. You'll <laughs> actually create a document in this. Here as well, and you can scroll through all of the things up here at the top here. Click, click, student 
Collaborate back, and you invited us all. Yeah. I, how do I find it to go right in it? I have no idea. All right. Anybody know? <laughs> <laughs> John? Yeah, it's not the web to collaboration. Well, I went in as a test student. Did this test student not have access to it? So maybe I should not be a test student? I don't know. Oh, yeah, there it is. Other collaborations. So my big question is when do things turn gray and when do things not turn gray? Because some of these things. Oh, there it is. Why didn't I see that? Right? So the grayed out. On the toolbar on the left there, yeah. that's you can specifically disable some of them yeah. if you want. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the grade outs, the students aren't going to be able to see them. Correct. Correct. Okay. A, a big thing, big difference between Canvas and D2L is you're unable to rename those tools in that navigation bar as well. A lot of people were used to being able to call content whatever they wanted or right. discussions but those are fixed names. So an advantage there is that the students will recognize from class to class to class, and there's a standardization. True. Can you add, add extra things to this on the bottom, or are, are you stuck with that and sat in the side? No. You, you have a fixed set of tools that you have to choose from. Some quiz that one of the, <coughs> the teachers created. I don't know which teacher it was, but I'm the careful with this here. Media Space does not seem to be an official tool yet. I don't know. Um, so I don't know the answer to that. So the embed codes work well, but you would need to, you know, manually, as far as I recall, go into HTML, the HTML mode, right. paste the, the embed code. So as an iframe sort of thing. Sure. 